Hi guys, welcome to this Plumber Parts and Cody UK video. My name's James. Today we're going to follow the step-by-step -step process of installing a vanity unit from start to finish. So we'll start off with an area that looks just like this and end up with a vanity unit installed that looks brilliant just like this. In this video, we're going to be using the Ideal Standard Concept Air Tap, some of their lovely basin as well. We've got a lovely basin to install, a great vanity unit as well. All of this stuff's from Ideal Standard, and I'll leave links to that in the description below. So if you want any of it, you can find out a bit more about it. Please remember to like, subscribe, scrub my cat Big G on the belly, and let's get on with the video. Remember everyone, to hold tight. <laughs> guys let's first have a quick look at actually what we've got under here what connections we're going to be working with and the general area that we're going to be working in before we begin we've got an isolator under here that's obviously a bit floppy at the moment we're going to have to get the spark in about that but that's going to be sat on the back box work behind and underneath our vanity unit um, if we can't get it all the way through what we might have to do is actually put it on the wall and then leave a little cut out in the back of the vanity unit so people can get to it also we've got our hot and cold here i can't remember which way around they are because i did this absolutely ages ago so I'm going to have to figure that one out very quickly as well. And we've also got a little bit of a control centre under here as well that is for our little bit of electric underfloor heating that we've got under our tiles here as well. I've said as well quite a lot, haven't I? Um, so, so what I do first is actually get your vanity unit in here, figure out which way around you want it. I know that I'm going to want it sort of this way around with my tap kind of here. Um, so the first thing I say you do is get the vanity unit in here, do some measuring and you can do a lot of the work now that's going to make this job a lot easier for you. So let's have a look at that and let's get measured up and actually plan the job out properly. If we plan it properly, there'll be less problems later on. Bloody lighter, does it? Right then, guys, there's a couple of things you've got to think about. There's lots of thinking that we need to do, isn't there? If we don't think, everything will go bums in the air. Yep. Right, so first thing, just get the measurements of your vanity unit that you want to put in. So the width of this vanity unit is 600, and I want it to go along that way, so I'm just going to draw 600 on the wall. The cut of arrows, like that. It's going to be hidden, but you know, if I write it on a bit of paper and lose that bit of paper, oh, it'd be well grumpy gut, wouldn't I? So this way, for forward, 440. So I'm going to pop that on there just like so. Now the reason I'm doing that is because I've got a bit of skirting board and what I'm gonna have to do once I know how far they go out each way I'm gonna have to get my little fane or my oscillating tool my multi cutter to just skill down there and then get that little bit of skirting board out of the way otherwise we're gonna be leaving a big gap between this and the wall if we don't take it out of the way. Now the next thing I just say you want to quickly do is just measure up from the floor to the top of the back of this and give yourself a little bit of room. So if I come up 18 inches I know then that all all my pipe work will be sticking out proud of that. That's 18 inches, just like that. Because I'm not a sparky, I don't want to start playing around with their wires and all that sort of stuff. I'll get a sparky in to sort that bit out later on. I'm not going to be poking my head under there forever, looking at it and crying. I cry about other things like the bit when they shoot two socks in Dances with Wolves. <sighs> Breathe deep. <laughs> Guys, if you don't have a skill saw or a cutter, uh, well, I don't actually know what you're gonna do. I mean, just get one, they're so handy, and you can use them for loads of other DIY jobs around the house. Right then, guys, now we've got those bits out the back, let's just do a little bit more planning. Now, we're seeing a back view here of, obviously, where the wall is gonna go up to here, and our vanity unit's gonna open out of there. Now, get whatever basin waste you're gonna use. Uh, I'd suggest what you do is you just drop it down into the hole, and then pop on the trap that you're going to use as well. Right, okay, so now we've got that there like so. So now we know, within about five mil, what the height of our elbow going out to our trap is going to be from the wall. What I need to do is I'll just measure up here like so, five, eight, five mil, okay? So now I know how far to bring up my pipe extension when I first fix on the wall at the back here. So five, eight, five. So I'm gonna draw that, five, eight, five. So what we're saying is there where we wanna put our elbow, we've actually got that now marked on the wall, just there under waist elbow. So that means now what I can do, get a bit of waste pipe that I've got here, okay, it's a bit of a dirty piece, but it's just been knocking around in the van. And now I can say, right, I know where I want the bottom of my elbow to go. Now I put a straight coupling on there, We've got our pipe here and in a minute when this is all set out nice, 
and we'll be able to clip that up and we know exactly that our waist elbow is gonna come out exactly where we want it for the height of our waist here. So what we're going to do is we're very quickly going to get this gorgeous, gorgeous concept air. And I'm going to give you some nice close-up shots of this in a minute. Build your concept air up if you have to. They usually come made already. And the good thing is, is that we can now see as well how high up we want to bring our actual pipes. Now, concepts are great because they give us a lot of flex, okay, to use underneath. If you want, you can use the copper flexies that you can buy, but under bars and under sinks, and one of the rare occasions I'll use a flexi, you have to use them right. I know I do the Flexi Friday hashtag on our social media. If that's when they're kinked and they're horrible, we can use these to a good effect on jobs like this. So I can bring this flexi up to here and go, right, I know that I'm gonna get roughly that far up with my pipe. Now, what I'm gonna do is just give my a little bit more. So I mark that on the side there. Now I'm just going to make sure that my far flex you could be able to do that as well. So now we know how far up we want to bring our copper pipes as well. So through a little bit of deciphering, through a little bit of work, bit of planning, we're making this job easy for us because we don't want to be doing a lot of work down behind this panel here. We want to try and keep any compression fittings or anything like that above this panel as well. So if there's any problems, the engineer who's going to come after us or the plumber or the homeowner is going to be able to get to everything. That's so important. We don't want to be leaving people stuck. I measure again from the floor up to my mark. That's 21 and a half inches is the nearest or mm, 550 mil. And now I know I can come back round here and go 550 mil. That there. Uh, okay, now the other thing I want to do is we need to know how much cavity space we have to play with. So the next thing I need to do is get my bends up and over to the back of the wall before we hit the bottom of the actual unit. My darling wife, Emily, I love you so much. She actually originally wanted the bit to go along this way, which is why my pipes are flushed to the wall at the back there. Yeah, she changed her mind. <sighs> Anyway, uh, so, what we've, so we've got 100 mil there from the floor. So I'm just gonna measure that over there. And then from the back, we've got 70 mil. Okay. So there you go, we've got a jaggedy section just up there. And then the top of the pipe, as you can see, that's gonna be our little cavity area. So I can't put any pipes this side of that line. They have to go behind that line within the squiggly area there. If they don't, we know we'll be impinging outside of our cavity just here. <laughs> So one thing I'd like to say is the, the concept air from Ideal Standard and also most of their taps, when they supply the flexibles, they supply the Imperial to 15 mil adapter, which most suppliers don't do, and I like that. Another thing I'd like to say as well, when it comes to a brief review of the concept air, is that the adapter they send is not of a poor quality. It tightens up, it doesn't squeak, it's got proper um, like brass feel to it. They're not like the cheapy ones, when you tighten them up they squeak and everything and you know they're gonna leak. It's also so you're gonna see that I've built up both of my valves going onto my pipe bits already. Um, this just makes things easier. I don't have to tighten them up now, do I, when they're under the sink? Uh, also, they've all been joint and compounded as well. I just highly recommend you do that, all right? Guys, remember, always put your pipe clips in first and your pipe should follow nice and straight afterwards. It's an old plumber's tip, that, yeah. Right then, guys, so we've got our hot and cold in now and our waste, little bit of jiggity piggity or whatever you wanna call it down here. But those two pipes aren't touching and they're not rubbing on those tiles, so they should just be fine. And let's face it, we're never gonna see them. What I like to see is nice straight stubs going up, nice easy valves to get to at the top, everything should be fine. What I'm now gonna do is make sure that our vanity unit goes in this space nicely as well. Gonna make sure that all our wires can flop into where we need to and all that sort of stuff. And then we're gonna fast forward about a day or two after the Sparky's come in and pop that on. Fixing the unit to the wall is easy. Just use the two lugs on the back and make sure you put plenty of glue and fixing as well. Yes. Right then everyone, the Sparky's been in and he's done that main plug down the back there. The underfloor heating stuff still isn't done yet, but oh, I've got my plumber's mate here, which this is a tip between you and me. Whenever you do any work with plumber's mate, this is, I see this is better than silicon when it comes to doing wastes. Just make sure it's cold, all right? That's the secret to this stuff. Right, so now all we need to do is get our basin prepared. I mean, we can, because we 
can lay the basin on with our tap attached already and also our waist on. It's easier to do it now because otherwise we've got to get under there to do it and it's just gonna be harder, isn't it? So like I said, all I've wanted to do in this video is make this job easier for you. Also, while I'm getting these unpacked, if we have a quick look at the unit that we've actually put in, you probably notice that our walls are a little bit out. Blame Mick, blame old Mickey Moo. So, I mean, it's one of those things, that's just life really. Walls can be out. So we've done a little bit of filling underneath. That means now when we come back to it later, we'll be able to run our silicon down there and I'll show you how to do that last. Just a quick look at the concept there on its own. What we're gonna have is our, our little rubber O-ring in there. We've already got our two flexies in. We've already got our little bit of stud work here. The basin's gonna come up like that. Well, imagine my fingers are the basin. Underneath we've got our lock-in U or whatever you wanna call it. Then we'll have our nut underneath like that. That will do up and that'll clamp our tap in place. Make sure that your rubber is facing down. Just go as tight as you can here and make sure as well that your spout on the tap is nice and straight. Right, so now all we need to get in is our waist. Really, really simple. We've done this millions of times before. Um, first thing I'd recommend you do, take off the actual top part of the waist and just pop it to one side. Make sure you leave the decorative cap on it. So if you drop anything, it doesn't get scratched. So we're just gonna pop that over there. Then what we have is the standard slot type for the overflow. Try to make that slot face the overflow outlet just here so that can sort of flow in there nice and easily should you leave the tap on. Well, what I'm gonna do is is just do this all in one go. I've got my sausage there. I pop this on here like that. Make sure that's facing roughly the right direction. These are gonna get in the way a little bit, but that's just life. Then I'm just gonna pop my sausage round the thread like so, just like that, okay? And then just push as much onto and in, just sort of diagonally push it into the thread and also into the basin. I just prefer this method from silicon in. I just do, it's just how it is. Everyone's got their own way of doing things. Don't hate on me guys, this isn't Twitter. Um, you know, we're on YouTube here. This is all about constructive criticism, all right guys? If you've got another way of doing it, share it in the comments below. We pop our little washer on there like so. And now we should just be able to do this up and just get everything squeezed in there as hard as possible. Now, one thing I'd say is a really good idea is to get a screwdriver, try and push it into the slot from the top side, and that will give you enough sort of leverage to stop this spinning round while you do this up. And the good thing, it's not a very wasteful product, plumbers mate, because it just spews out what it doesn't want to use, you know, so. There we go. So just look, ring that lot off there like so. We're just gonna leave putting this on for a sec. Let's just quickly get the top of the actual vanity unit itself ready to receive our lovely little basin. Right then guys, so what we're gonna do is just get a small amount of gripper and then just run a small bead down the inside, if you can, of that little bit of wood. So look, if you just have a look there, we're just running that down the inside. Just like that, just uh, I say the inside purely because if we do get any splodge or any squidging out, hopefully we won't be able to see it up oh, and we won't have to do any clearing up in a minute. That's all. So you know, I don't tend to do the front. I just don't. I don't like to see it, that's all. Yeah. Right guys, so we're ready to pop that on now that we've got that there. Just lay this on our top like so. Oh yeah, it's looking good. Woohoo! Loving that. Right then guys, so there we go, we've got that beast installed. So let's get our pipe work down here sorted out. It shouldn't take us two seconds. So firstly, look at how our measurements have worked out. We've got rubbers on here. We've already pressure tested these. How neat is that? That's just gonna pop on there like so, and we're done up. Nice and easy. Boom, there we go, that one's done. And then this one here. Yeah, nipped and nipped. So there we go, our two water connections are now done. See guys, I hope you've recognized there, because we've put those pipes in, we put the valves on and we did all that before we put the vanity unit in, it meant we could do one very important thing, and that's pressure test our pipe work before we put the vanity unit in. The last we want is to pressure test it now and then go, oh my God, I've got a leak down the back there and we've got to take the whole vanity unit out. So, you know, do things the right way round, you're making your life easier for yourself, all right? Let's get on with the waste. So we measured the waste, didn't we? So we could make sure that our outlet would be just about right. And that looks still pretty good on there at the moment. So 
what I'm gonna do, all I need is to get my elbow on here properly, so that's glued. Small spigot of pipe on there, and then whack that on there as well. Let's do it. Make sure you've got a good rubber seal on here. That can sometimes leak on there. The rubber seal's gonna be a little bit funny. And also make sure that you don't cross the thread. Good way of doing that is to run the nut backwards so you hear a little click. Once you hear the click, run it forwards again and then you won't be crossing the thread there. Build up and install the compression fitting side of your waist in the way that you normally would do. I've done loads of videos on it in the past. And there we go, the waist is in, that's in. Let's turn the water on and just make sure we haven't got any leaks. Cool, so here we go. Cold, good, and then hot, good, and then both. Nothing there. Oh yeah, guys, that's what I'm talking about. Right, let's do a full, just do a fill up quickly on that. Got enough there now. See how she drains. This is the true test of your waste system. Right now, see if that leaks or not, and... Oh yeah, nothing there. Well, I would say that's pretty successful. I'm gonna let this set before I finish this whole little install off, all right? Right then guys, so we've got everything in now. Um, just wanna sort of reiterate what we did to install the actual cabinet. You've got two lugs at the back, we just whacked two screws through there. Very, very fortunately, I caught the actual stud work. So I've got a really good anchorage point. Uh, and also glue it. Let's face it, once it's in place and it's all glued in or you've siliconed it in or used whatever fixer you've got, the only way that's gonna come out is if you go into some incandescent rage over the fact that you've finally got long nose hair, long ear hair, and one out of the middle of your earlobe. But what I want to show you now is how we get this little piece done here. Use a good silicone for a start. I tend to use Dow Corning stuff. I really like their silicones. Oh man, I've got to get a new uh, Oh, <laughs> Has it landed face down? Oh no, at last I've cut one off and it didn't land face down. Now looking at the size of that gap there, everything in there is hard now. This is. It's just not going anywhere, so this is really for decoration. If I was to give you one tip on siliconing, it would be to get lots of blue roll, buy some former profiles, and just take your time and enjoy the process somehow. So guys, there we go, all done. The job is complete. I'm very, very happy with the finished article. Um, I'd like to quickly talk about Ideal Standards tap that we've got on here, because it is very sexy. Um, and I did like a survey about taps, and it seems like a lot of plumbers are more happy to fit a cheaper type of tap and then go back to it and fix it in two or three years time. Where I've got to say I prefer to do this way where you pay for quality, British made stuff, uh, and it works, it lasts for longer, it's much, much better, it just feels solid, it's really, really good. I'm gonna leave links to everything that I've installed here today down in the description below, so go and check them out. If you get a minute as well, please go and follow my vlog channel at Times With James. I flew my drone through some fireworks a few days ago, you might like that. And please subscribe to Plumber Parts here. Also follow us over on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, and Snapchat and I'll see you in the next video. I hope this has helped you. If it hasn't, if you haven't learned something and you think you wanna know more, then please let us know uh, in the comment section below. Hit that like button as well. So many things for you guys to go and do, all right? You've got a portfolio of work to go and carry out now. Better go and do it all. Have a great day, guys. I hope this has helped you out and I'll see you in our next video. Thanks ever so much for watching and remember, hold tight, see you soon. Ow! Let's go. Also, a special message for my man Riley down in Southampton's. Just had a bit of an operation. Uh, get well soon, mate, and remember to hold tight as well.